I'm a bit late to the party, but I still wanted to share my last year's top oracle decks. Actually, I'm a bit proud of myself regarding how prudent my oracle purchases have been last year. I think I'm finally starting to understand what type of oracles I like and what type of oracle decks I understand. So there will be top three and an honorable mention. Let's start with an oracle which became one of my favorites in just a couple of days after arriving. Fallen Angel Oracle Cards. This deck was uh, first published in uh, 2011, uh, then it went out of print, and I saw some decks selling for 100 euros and more. Uh, then, luckily, the deck got republished uh, last year in April. Uh, this is a collage deck. Uh, main uh, photographs come from Nunhead Cemetery in London, and uh, on some cards, animals and uh, other details are added. And Deck's author, Nigel Suckling, describes fallen angels, angels who have fallen from grace, as those who know both sides of the story, who view our world from behind the scenes with more clear view uh, of the mechanisms that govern our lives. They are closer to pagan gods or Celtic fairies um, than to standard angels or demons. So I would say nothing demonic in these cards. Actually, it's a very balanced deck. And I would highly recommend that you read the guidebook when you start working with this deck. Um, because... Um, Descriptions, oh, let me show you some. Uh, descriptions in a card, uh, in the deck, uh, give quite a lot of keywords and also a short uh, story or some ideas to use. And some of those ideas and um, keywords are even quite far from the main keyword on the card itself. Uh, and on some occasions, uh, those just couple of words in the guidebook, uh, in the description, uh, will hit the point or your question precisely. In Russian, this oracle deck is called Savet Lasosia Mundresti. In English, it would be Salmon Advice or Salmon of Wisdom. I'm guessing that the name is a reference to King Solomon, but there is also a wise Salmon or Salmon of Knowledge in Irish mythology. According to the story, an ordinary Salmon ate main hazelnuts that fell into the well of wisdom, and this Salmon gained all the world's knowledge. The first person to eat of its flesh would in turn gain this knowledge. Right now I have a volumes... Uh, three and four in English, and volumes uh, two, three and four in Russian. I hope I'll soon get uh, also volume one and five in Russian. But you can get uh, volumes uh, three, four and five in English uh, from Creator's Etsy shop. I will try to remember and leave a link below. The reason I have both languages is because uh, I found English version first, but I assume this deck was originally created in Russian. Uh, Russian is not my native language also, but um, I have spoken it uh, freely since I was uh, six years old, so I have more reaction to idioms and world play in Russian. And with this deck, you will have to read between the lines. Uh, there is no guidebook. And so all you have is uh, this uh, quirky, uh, whimsical pictures, uh, which seem to be come out of a fairy tale, plus a small sentiment. And all the rest is up to you. Uh, about those little symbols on the card. Um, they are card suits theoretically. Um, those green circles uh, represent world of uh, plants, and that part of a deck is a bit more greenish. Then there are blue arrows, uh, which represent the world of birds and air, and have a little bit more blue tone in it. 
then there are uh, turquoise crosses and this is the native element of salmon, it's water and uh, they are this greenish bluish color and all the thi all the things are happening in the water or or at least it seems so and then there is uh, orange rhombuses uh, there are different animals pictured here um, I would say one suit in tarot, uh, more fiery and orange in tone. Um, but then again, this deck is uh, so strange and so unconventional, I don't think it really has a system here. Uh, when I have a question, I pull one card from each volume. Because when I asked uh, each of the deck, would they like to be mixed together? They all said, nope, not really. Uh, it's really easy to work with uh, these texts. You get a short metaphorical answer or idea right away. Uh, this deck has a great sense of humor. It can lift you up and be a bit of a troll at the same time. Uh, this deck gives good advices and uh, clarifies situation and it somehow um, finds smart way to explain uh, different, uh, different situations and it always leaves a warm aftertaste. Memento Mori deck. I like this deck so much that I even made a walkthrough of it. It's a Lenormand plus Oracle deck. Uh, it's made by Claire Goodchild. She's author of uh, Antique Anatomy Tarot, uh, also Oracle of Oddities and some other decks. There are 85 cards in this deck and first uh, 36 cards can be used uh, separately as a Lenormand deck. Although uh, some titles there have been changed, like for example House is Grave, Tree is gallows, bouquet logically is a wreath, and birds are bats. Uh, author promises to release several expansion packs, and the uh, first expansion pack uh, is available already now. Uh, so soon enough, uh, this will be my biggest ever oracle deck. Oh, and there is also a podcast where uh, Claire uh, shares some stories behind the meanings and the symbols in, in the deck. There is a little guidebook and it uh, gives you um, just a couple uh, short meanings for each card. Um, and uh, those keywords seem to go well with the picture but uh, can be dissimilar between themselves in meanings as such. Uh, so uh, context and also your intuition is important. And actually uh, Claire uh, uh, encourages us to come up with our own meanings. Mm. And at the first glance it seems that deck consists of just uh, natural or negative cards. But mostly it is for the reader to decide how to approach those cards. Uh, visually this is a bit um, spooky and witchy, uh, Victorian era antiques. The only colors uh, used here are green, black and uh, white with some tiny splashes of yellow on some of the cards. So overall impression is muted and grave, which goes well with the name of the deck and also its subtitle. An artistic and symbolic reminder of inevitability of death. Uh, there are cards um, with uh, everyday objects like um, salt representing purifying, clearing, magical protection, perfume, fond memory, comforting presence, attracting a mate, teapot, hot gossip, sensitive information, healing remedy and afternoon, glove, don't get your hands dirty, conceal, disguise, handle with care, 
and also quite unusual scenes like plague doctor, chronic illness, caretaker, healer, safety precautions, embalming fluid, preserve something, holding on, get tradition going. Tear catcher, mourning, holding on to trauma, time to move on. Amputation, so removing toxic influence, save yourself, drastic change, last chance. And now an honorable mention, Compendium of Witches. It arrived at the very end of December and it will definitely be a favorite, but technically I opened it only in 2021. I got the oracle cards and also the big book. Actually, a book came first and after creating this book, author decided to make also an oracle deck. So, in this big book, uh, which is which production quality is absolutely stunning, you get a story for each witch in the compendium. Uh, artwork is just incredibly incredibly beautiful um, stories are about fictional women all but one one is a real person uh, but um, they are based on real life historical facts and settings because author of the deck and also the book is anthropologist all of these witches are just women no superpowers, they are not deities, but they all have ability to see. In the deck there are 30 witches or voices and 30 whispers um, depicting different uh, symbols, mostly from nature. There is also a little guidebook which gives a short uh, story for every witch, some keywords, and for those whispers we have just the keywords. But the main reason I got this deck was because of this card. Her name is Ruta and she is from my tribe from a Baltic tribe. And this is where different Baltic tribes lived around 3000 years ago. And this is where we live now. Lithuania and Latvia. I live here. Main event in Ruta's life, as described in the book, is actually a real historical event. Sauliskauja, Battle of Sauli. It was fought uh, somewhere here on year 1236 between the local pagan troops and Livonian Brothers of the Sword. It was a Catholic uh, military order, crusaders, uh, mainly German warriors. There was a tiny moral challenge for those crusaders. This land wasn't previously Christian, so technically there were no Christians to protect. But, <laughs> yeah. In mentioned Battle of Saule, local pagans won. It was the earliest large-scale defeat suffered by the crusaders in Baltic lands, and they lost some more battles. <laughs> but, unfortunate to locals, crusaders eventually won the war. But, although there were attempts to Christianize Latvia since 12th century, I think in heart we are still pagans. We wear our pagan symbols and ethno-based jewelry with pride, like this one. And this is my favorite symbol. It's a grass snake, Zaltis. Symbol of intelligence, spirituality. In our mythology, snake connects this world with the other world. Many Latvians, including me, either already have or hope to have a national costume one day. There are many beautiful costumes from different time periods and regions. 
this is the costume I hope to get one day. It's based on archaeological findings um, dated the 12th century. This is approximately how it looked uh, when it was just dug out from the ground. And uh, I hope you notice the similarities here, why you had to go through this history lesson. Because I come from a small country with long-lived and cherished cultural heritage, and I get very excited every time when my ancestors' culture, folklore gets noticed and appreciated. But now, back to the beautiful deck and its stunning production quality. I would say that, um, to me, this is Weaver's Oracle when it was younger and uh, traveled around the world gathering knowledge. Because these ladies come from different time periods, different centuries, different places, different continents, uh, different belief systems even. And when looking at this deck, I think I finally realize why I cannot connect to the oracles based on angels and deities. I feel more connected to these divine beings, which walked the earth and knew how to see, like these witches or weavers. Thank you for staying with me till the end. Have a nice day and see you next time.